Good morning, and thank you, David, for the introduction. It's always a pleasure to speak at this conference. And I also want to thank Claire, because she always organizes this conference at the week of the International Women uh, Week. As you know, we've entered 2020 with an unprecedented level of challenges, uncertainties, and worries from the coronavirus outbreak to millions of displaced refugees to worsened climate outlook. And it's a, at the same time, we're also entering an unprecedented era of digital transformation underpinned by amazing technologies such as machine learning and AI used in combination with ultra-fast gigabit uh, broadband networks. My aim today is to reignite some level of optimism in all of us because the telco sector, once equipped with these amazing technologies ahead, can be an essential part of the solution to these profound issues, can also fuel economic and societal growth. And our early experiences in Vodafone in Europe are already encouraging us about this prospect. So today, I want to leave you with three key points. One, we as an industry, as telcos, we must transform ourselves. Second, our sector needs the right market and regulatory conditions to succeed in this transformation. And third, we are committed to pursue our strategy as a purpose-led company. Our strategy is based on transforming Vodafone from a telco to a techco. This is underpinned by, first and foremost, changing the way we interact with our customers and deepening our customer engagement. Last year, I talked to you about our issue, how low the net promoter scores were for all the telcos across Europe, clearly demonstrating that the customers are indifferent to us. Our view is that this was primarily driven by our own protectionary mindset, which has failed to build trust with our customers, with the regulators, with the politicians. And this lack of trust has ultimately translated itself into heavier and persistent regulation. As a result, our industry is weaker with an unsustainable level of competition and poorer network quality and access compared to what could have been possible. And if our sector does not perform, it holds back the digital transformation opportunities for everyone else. Therefore, we have decided to make a shift last year in our customer engagement strategy from an acquisition focus to a retention focus. We placed a relentless effort on delivering the best customer experience, starting with simplifying our products and services, such as the launch of unlimited mobile plans across Europe. As a result, we've in announced a fifth quarter of lower mobile contract churn in Europe, down by 80 basis points since last year. Another shift in our strategy has been on our products, from a single product focus to a multi-product focus, encouraging our customers to take more than one service from us. In that particular area, convergence propositions have been key. We now possess the largest next generation fixed networks in Europe, thanks to numerous MNAs, most recently the Unity Media in Germany, UPC in Central and Eastern Europe, APCOM in Albania. We already service 7 million converged customers in Europe. And we see in Netherlands, for example, that customers who have both mobile and fixed services from us are half as likely to churn as those who only get one service from us. Another shift that we have made in order to become a techco has been on our platform strategy. We want to embrace co instead of competition 
and to partner with like-minded organizations with complementary strengths to facilitate co-creation on our platforms. We believe this will enable us to broaden our suite of services and expand our outreach to customers, generating higher customer satisfaction as well as revenue growth. We aim to become the, the partner of choice in the digital ecosystem. We already have the world's leading IoT platform with over 99 million connected SIMs. Vodafone Automotive, for example, tracks over 1.5 million cars around the world today, keeping them safe and helping law enforcement. On average, we find three stolen cars a day, including, as you might have seen before Christmas, Richard Grant's missing Land Rover. We have recently signed partnerships with AT&T and America Mobile to make it easier for businesses to deploy truly global IoT services. Another key platform for us is now the TV platforms. We already have one of the largest TV platforms in Europe, serving 20 new, 22 million customers. We've created a single cloud-based TV platform that yields significant benefits in terms of feature sets, operation costs, as well as content distribution. We're also excited about the possibilities of M-Pesa, the lar largest payments platform in Africa with 42 million customers in seven countries. It is a major driver of business growth for us with higher ARPU, lower churn, but also very importantly, it generates huge benefits for the local economies. We're expanding the capabilities of M-Pesa, which includes microloans and new insurance policies. And finally, our biggest platform is Towers. We're making good progress with the creation of our standalone European Tower Co. We know that in order to get the strategy right, we need to build ultra-fast, ubiquitous, mobile and fixed gigabit networks. We've already launched 5G in seven European markets with more to come. We were also first to launch 5G roaming, now in five markets. We're cl working closely with governments and enterprises to show how 5G can change businesses and societies for the better. From private networks that enable greater automation in an electric 5G factory in Germany, to life-saving connected ambulances in Milan, our 5G networks are transforming the way we interact. We're also rolling out full fiber gigabit cities and towns across Europe. In Germany, for example, we will deliver fixed gigabit connections to 25 million households by 2022, single-handedly reaching almost two-thirds of the government's national target. However, too many rural areas across Europe and the UK do not benefit from the same connectivity as urban areas. We know the effect this has on local communities, leaving them unable to compete, facing economic difficulties with dwindling populations. So in a move that's particularly close to my heart, we are deliberately including remote areas in our gigabit network rollouts. In Ireland, I was so excited to visit the town of Skibreen, which is the smallest town in West Cork with a population of 2,600. In this town, our investment of gigabit hubs has already facilitated creation of new high-value startups creating 200 new jobs, which is not small for a population of 2,600. Reversing the brain drain from all across the world, I've met different nationalities, and delivering an annual 11 million euro economic value. I want to pilot this now as a concept for expansion in Europe, and we will be introducing it in Karlovary, 
in Czech Republic and Tirikala in Greece to start with. Gigabit networks are the backbone of everyday digital life. But we can only deliver this transformation if we have a regulatory environment that enables sustainable investment. We need a regulatory framework that addresses the challenges of this fast-moving industry where one cannot anticipate and regulate for every potential outcome. An innovation-first approach would set out broad principles that would then give businesses the room to innovate and scale. Getting that framework right will help the industry deliver the transformational products and experiences customers increasingly demand from us. For example, this right framework for more network sharing will help us expand access. Beyond these frameworks, if you look at investment levels in Europe and in the UK, compared to America and China, there is a significant lag. So listening to the Secretary of State this morning, I was delighted how he was putting ultra-fast broadband connectivity uh, as a priority, working with the industry to develop this framework. Our industry faces considerable barriers and long delays. In some countries, it takes months, if not years, to lay the fiber that our customers need now. Finally, acquiring spectrum remains a major concern in Europe. Auctions need to be structured in a way such to encourage fair competition and returns on investment. We can only roll out 5G if the regulators provide access to spectrum in a timely, joined-up manner. Europe has already fallen behind its planned timetable for 5G spectrum auctions. Our transformation to ATECO also requires us to change and adapt the way we service and operate in a digital era. For this, two years ago, we embarked on a digital transformation, applying it across all of our markets. Our ultimate goal is to maximize customer satisfaction through digital first and seamless omnichannel experience. For example, we know that 90% of our customers do not like the IVRs. This is why we have prioritized the digital self service and our chatbot named Toby already handles almost 20% of our customer interactions in 14 markets. We also relaunched my Vodafone app with, with a vision to make it a gateway to our customers' digital lives. This approach also helps us save cost efficiency. The digital transformation is a key contributor to our OPEX reduction commitment of 1.2 billion euros by the end of next financial year. In previous years in this conference, I talked to you about our purpose-led approach that underpins all of our strategy. Our purpose is to connect everyone for a better future, leaving no one behind. We aim to improve 1 billion lives through an inclusive digital society. At the same time, we want to help in our environmental impact. On this latter point, by 2025, we made a commitment to purchase 100% renewable energy to help our greenhouse gas emissions and to reuse, resell, or recycle 100% of our network base, waste. We've set up an internal marketplace, almost like an internal eBay, to enable the local markets to trade and share network equipment that they don't, they don't need anymore. Almost all of our cables, switches, racks are reused through this mechanism. We also recognize that our customers want our help to reduce their own environmental footprint. For this, in November, we announced a new partnership with Fairphone in six markets. The new Fairphone 3 is an ethically sourced modular smartphone with an easily repairable and replaceable screen, 
battery and camera so that it extends the life of the device, minimizing its environmental footprint. We've also committed to reduce all non-essential plastics in our retail stores. Last year, we introduced a half-sized SIM that reduces our plastic waste by more than 340 tons a year and reduces our CO2 emissions by 5,000 tons a year. Another pillar of our purpose-led approach is to include everyone so that no one is left behind with a particular focus on women. Last year at this conference, I spoke to you about our new program, which was tailored towards supporting women that are unfortunately facing domestic violence. And we've introduced two initiatives. One was a paid leave for our colleagues facing this tragedy, and another one for the communities, which is a free Bright Sky app. And I'm really pleased to um, to, to, to see the results and the support we're providing through this program. In addition, you will remember that we have launched a global maternity policy that is now benefiting 1,500 women a year, and we now extended it to all new parents in all of our markets. Meanwhile, our ReConnect program, which aims to get back women that have been on the long career breaks back into the workforce is progressing on target. We have launched a new program in Turkey which has facilitated startups by over 50,000 female entrepreneurs. We are committed to keep working on the diversity inclusion with continuous stream of initiatives. And uh, we have made a recent research about what could be that next campaign, next program that we could launch. So we, worked at the, we looked at the workplace. The workplace has evolved since how Lord Hall described it back in the 70s, very male. Uh, it was a great picture that uh, he put in front of us. Yes, things have evolved. Nevertheless, we're still not there and we know it. Our research showed across Europe that the ratio of men working in the tech sector is more than three times than that of women. And the number of working women in digital roles is going actually backwards. It's now down to 13% and it used to be 15% nine years ago. I'm therefore delighted to let you know that tomorrow we will be launching a new campaign which is calling for action for doing something more in the tech sector for diversity and particularly women in the workforce. The campaign is called Change the Face, Change the Face of the Users and the Producers of Technology. It's a call for action for the industry to come together and to be a positive for force for change for better diversity and I'm delighted to be uh, joining that event and will be sharing more with you tomorrow. In conclusion, as our industry evolves at incredible speed and as the world faces also unprecedented level of challenges, we are committed to bring the technology and innovation as a means of solution and as a means of progress for societies economies and the planet. We continue to find the future exciting and we're working hard to be ready. Thank you very much.